Here we go. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you guys can see us when you jump on. If you can send us a comment or an emoji or something so that we know that you can hear us, that would be great. Let's see if we can get a few people on here. So if you are new um, and you haven't joined us on a Tuesday night before, then welcome. And my name is Lindsay and this is my husband, Jess. And we are the owners and operators here um, at Hayes Cove Fall Performance Horses. We are mostly riding rainers. We do some cow horses and some ranch riders and a little bit of everything. Um, Jess does almost all of the training. I do most of the teaching. And um, we are on every Tuesday at 7.30 and we're answering questions that are sent in by you guys. So the question that we're gonna answer tonight is about the right lead. Um, somebody has sent in a question asking about the right lead and uh, it feeling um, choppy and um, just not as coordinated as the left side and they were having trouble feeling balanced. The rider was having trouble feeling balanced to the right and um, the turns were, uh, I can't remember the wording she used, but the turns were unbalanced. The turns were kind of rough. So um, we are gonna touch on that. And if you have questions as we go along, please drop them. Even if you're not watching live, we're happy to answer those um, after the fact. I like to come back and go through all the comments. So um, if you have the same issue or you have further questions about the right lead um, or lead departures or struggling in one lead um, rather than the other, go ahead and leave those for us. And um, if you have a question about something else, then you can send that in and uh, we kind of select one at random to um, answer every week. So you can, you can send those in. You know what, I bet you those birds are super loud. I hope you guys can hear us. Can you hear us? Hi, Mary. Looks like there's a few people jumping on now. So um, the question for tonight, the, uh, the right lead. I bet you they're super loud for people watching at home. Um, yeah, the right lead, I think, or did you have anything else that you wanted to say to start out? No, good no. Okay. Okay, so um, the right lead, the issue with the right lead is super, super common. Um, and what I like to tell everybody, because a lot of people will say, you know, my right lead feels worse than my left and I feel like I'm slipping to the outside and, you know, what am I doing wrong to the right? And what I usually like to start out by telling people is um, that most horses are one side dominant and most horses are actually left side dominant. So just like most people um, are not totally ambidextrous um, and most people are oh Anne's saying she can still hear us over the birds okay good because we don't want to open up the doors Anne, because it's freezing it's snowing out um, okay so so most horses are right side dominant and um, or sorry left side dominant and most people are right side dominant so just like I like to write with my right hand um, most horses will choose to lope off on the left lead. And if you watch your horse out in the field um, and you see them running, you can sometimes get an indication of um, what side dominant your horse is just from seeing what lead they choose. If you have them in the round pen or you have them you know, loose in the arena or out in the field or wherever, you can see which lead they typically choose to pick up. Um, and I think that's just a really helpful thing to know, you know, when you think about riding one lead or the other and why does one feel worse, it's handy to know that um, one way is stronger for your horse. You know, if you think about it that way, then it's, um, it's easier to stay patient when you're working with young horses and they're struggling getting one lead. Um, and when you feel like you are unbalanced, going to the right, if your horse is left side dominant, which most of them are, um, then you kind of know what you're working with a little bit more. A lot of times it's not, I mean, yeah, there's things that the rider can do um, to ride the right lead better and, and to try to, um, you know, help the horse be more coordinated in that direction. But a lot of times um, it actually is that the horse is less balanced. They're less coordinated. Um, 
and it, it is choppier to the right. You know, if I write with my right hand versus my left hand, you can tell one's choppier, one's, one's smoother. So um, that's the first thing. And then, and then behind that, so, you know, if we can all agree that horses are, you know, one side dominant, there are, and some are more than others, um, but there are a few theories um, behind that and why horses are, um, are one side dominant and why they are typically left side dominant. So if you know more theories on this and you want to chip in and fill me in, then I would love to hear them. But the ones that I know of are that um, foals in the womb are typically to the side. So like fetal position for a human is, you know, curled in this way. And um, for a foal in the womb, because they have such a limited amount of space, they'll actually be turned to one side. So the whole um, musculature and everything is developed typically with the horse flexed to the left. So this whole side is shorter and this whole side is longer. And um, there's this theory that that carries over to um, which side they prefer to flex to, and that carries over into um, which lead they prefer. So there's that theory. There's also the theory that because most humans are right-handed and we do everything with our right, um, where we're holding the horse on their left side, that we create that left side dominance. Um, and then there's one other, which is that horses are typically more right-brained, if you know about the sides of the brain and how um, they operate, that horses are typically more right-brained. And if they have a more developed right brain, then the left side of the body is the dominant side. So where most people are more left-brained left, left -brained and right-handed, um, the theory is that most horses are more right-brained right and therefore left side dominant. And I think one thing that plays into it too is everybody leads their horses on the left side. They're always pulling them to the left. They're always arcing them to the left. Getting their attention to the left. We walk through a gate, they get them to the left. Everything's to the left when we start working with them. Mm -hmm. um, or 90% of the people always do everything left on the left side too. So you think that one is the I main reason played, why? I don't think it's the main reason, yeah. but I think it definitely plays into it. Yeah. That when we like when we start colts we definitely feel horses that have been handled more usually are one-sided <coughs> more oh yeah like some horses will spook if you get off on the right side mm -hmm. yeah and won't lead to like won't lead one way won't yeah um and they'll they'll those horses will really do um better to the left with a bigger divide between that left and right mm-hmm so those are all the reasons of why they can be so one-sided. So yeah, some of the reasons why they can be one-sided. And then typically what that creates is when the horse is traveling to the right, they'll still be flexed a little bit to the left. And it's just less practiced. You know, if the horse is always choosing the left lead, then even if your warm-ups are even, even if you make sure you're going in both directions every time you ride, even if your horse is aged, even if it has had professional training, a lot of times it's just not the same to the right. Um, all of those things help, you know, practice, like, you know, where they're, they're taking that right lead and they're staying in that right lead for a long time. Um, learning it early in life helps. Um, you know, professional training obviously helps because then you're getting your horse to learn how to carry themselves on their own. You know, they're, they're, they're honing those skills, right? It'd be like if I went and started practicing with my left hand all the time. Um, so what, what ends up happening to the rider typically to the right is that the horse will want to be flexed a little bit to the left which means that they're stiffer, their spine is stiffer. Instead of being flexed in the direction that they're going where it's nice and fluid and balanced and relaxed, it's stiffer and choppier. And the centrifugal force, you know, if you're loping, you've got a little bit of centrifugal force there. You're, you're probably loping on a circle, right? Most of the time in an arena, 
it's pushing you to the outside. It's pushing to the pushing the rider to the outside, and it's typically pushing the rider to the outside more than it is in the other direction, which I think a lot of us don't really realize that it's even happening. Um, so pushing you to the outside, so that means that usually the hip is kind of pushed to the outside instead of the seat bones being centered on um, either side of the horse's spine. Now we've got them kind of shifted over to the outside on the circle, or sorry, on the saddle. Um, a lot of times the left leg will straighten up and stick to the outside. A lot of times the right leg will shrink up and kind of be holding, almost like holding the rider on. Um, and then a lot of times riders end up holding that inside rein as kind of a, a crutch or a balance or um, like a, a safety or a confidence thing, right? They kind of want to hold that right face as they're um, falling over to the left side. Um, so things that can help that rider would be making sure that you don't get pushed over. And, and for some people, what that looks like is, you know, people who are just starting to learn how to lope, I think they would start with, can I shift myself over in the saddle? Am I aware of my seat bones? Am I aware of where I am relative to the saddle? And am I aware of where the saddle is relative to my horse's spine? Because it pushes the saddle too. You know, the rider has to be responsible at some point for holding the saddle in place over the horse's center of gravity. So things the rider can do to stay more balanced when they're loping on the offside would be to think about being longer on the right side. So think about um, lengthening the right side and almost like driving the leg down or um, from the knee down, stretching the right knee down um, on the right side, making sure that they're not collapsing through their body. So making sure that they haven't got wrinkles in their shirt here, straightening up here and sitting over a little bit more to the right. Um, and then doing those turns across to the right where we're, we're making the horse, instead of kind of being sucked over like this, we're making the horse lift their shoulders up and um, make that turn across the circle. So I'm, I'm not sure if that really is answering your question. Did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? I'm not sure if that's really answering your question because um, I, you know, we haven't seen you ride. It's not a horse that is here and um, you know, we're a little bit blind on this one, but, but typically these are the things that happen. And, you know, I think knowledge is power and understanding those things is a huge part of, of correcting it. I think from my side of it with the training part mm -hmm. is if I have one that's really one-sided, I make sure I get myself really straight up and down. I don't try to help them at all. I want them to figure it out. And once I know it's not a lameness issue, and that happens quite often, people come in here, they, they lope five strides and they say, well, he must be off. You know, they, they lope 10 strides and they say, oh, I gotta give him a break. I, if I know they're not lame, go lope them a ton to the right. And yeah. everybody thinks, oh, I, you know, I, I worked hard to the right. Well, keep, keep going, just keep loping to the right. Um, let that horse get so comfortable going to the right that it becomes that second nature and that they're comfortable with it. Um, and I don't hold them up. I don't, I don't want to baby them at all. I just want to sit straight up and let them figure it out. And if, if I have a horse for a little bit that's one-sided, what I'll do is I'll lope around the arena a few times, walk for a second, maybe pull them around just for a minute, and then go right back to lope to the right. Give them a break, walk, go right back to the right. And I think that's something that I see a lot is everybody's real big to make the excuse, my horse doesn't like it, but they don't want to ride them hard enough to make them fix it. Just go lope them. Um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you can't all just the lope stuff a few that, circles and think that that's enough. No, you gotta no. stretch them muscles out. You gotta make them think that's as, just as easy. That's a good way to be. It's a nice spot to be. Mm -hmm. And if I'm asking for the, for the right lead, and one of them babies or an old horse that's just having trouble. Um, 
if they're wanting to sit there and take that left lead, you need to get after them a little bit. You need to make them kind of go, boy, that left isn't where I want to be. And then when they do take the right lead, just go low. Mm -hmm. You know, just drop the reins, let them go low for a while. Mm -hmm. And if they break eight and go back to the left, boy, get after them. Um, when I get after them, I'll usually lift them straight up in the bridle. I want to really arc their neck up and bring them straight up into their shoulders. And then I'll drive them with my... How do you do that again? My leg and my spur. And I'll push them up and it, I want them to... Um, be concerned about it. I want them to wiggle out of there and go, whoa, I shouldn't be on that left lead where I'm super comfortable. Um, and I think that's really important is, and there's where a little bit of professional help comes in and knowing how far you can take each horse and how much you can do to it. Um, and unfortunately, one-sided horses don't get fixed, you know, in a couple weeks or, you know, it takes a few months to get them really good at those that, that idea that both leads are a good place to be. Um, and again, making sure they're not hurting somewhere, um, you know, go lope them. And, and if I'm, a lot of horses we see too is they'll be maybe a little bit stiff and, you know, people, oh, they're gonna have a vet or the chiropractor come in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tell everybody before your vet and chiropractor comes in, work them harder. Don't lay them off for a week and then have your vet look at them, mm -hmm. especially if it's a one-sided deal or a little bit of swelling or something. Uh, as long as you know you're not gonna, don't hurt them, but work them harder. Make it so that when the vet comes in, they can look at that horse and go, they can that's see where what, it's sore. Yeah, they can see what the problem is, um, yeah. Whenever we have the vet, well, for certain things, I shouldn't say every time, but whenever I have a vet come in and I'm wanting a second opinion on why I think something's sore, I ride them hard. So that when my vet comes in, I don't waste his time sitting there thinking what might be. He knows exactly where it's going to be sore at because I've showed it to him. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. And if you start loping them really hard to the right and a general cycle they go through is they pick it up a few times, they backtrack, they get kind of grouchy about it. Then they go off that and then they get better. Mm -hmm. If you stop when they get a little grouchy, that's the worst time yeah. everybody says well it must be hurting him or yeah. at some point it's just a mental block the horse has mm -hmm. and he's not liking to be worked harder mm -hmm. work them harder they'll tell you if they're sore but work them harder is usually the good thing on one side of horses put some miles on those things um we don't like, do i feel like they get really confused if they're left-sided and you're trying to get them to take the right lead and they've been confused for some reason not even a young horse but like we see this in older horses and they take it a few times and then they get confused about it. And it's like, it's almost like they're thinking in their head, like you're asking me to lope and I'm loping and they're taking the wrong lead and then they're getting pulled down and they're getting frustrated about it because they think they're doing what you want. They think, you know, you're asking them to lope. They think they're doing it right. You have to really make sure that you're, you're positioning their body to the right for the right lead and then sticking with that until they get the right lead and stay in it. Yeah, I don't ever bring them down. Yeah, and you know, you let them walk. Can't quit and you then know. try again. You have to just keep forcing them to flex to the right. And sometimes it's a lot of work for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you have to get after them, especially them older horses. If they're, you know, they've been allowed to get away with it for a while. Those ones that we start and for the first thirty days, those are the easiest ones to teach both leads to. Yeah. Hands down, you get something that's a little older and is one side of their top. Mm -hmm. Um, and one that really helps that I think a lot of people don't have maybe the access to anymore or don't have the desire to do it is, boy, find a ditch bank somewhere and go lope them for a mile. Just let them go straight. Don't turn them. You know, if they get the right lead in the arena, we see it so often. People get the right lead and they, I got to get their face. I got to get them harder. I got to get gotta them faster. Do other I got to do other to stuff. Them. Yeah. Keep it simple for a while and just lope them on the right lead. Take them out in the middle of a field and go straight down. You know, if they got some headlands or something in a field or a nice flat shoulder on a road, like a, or a ditch, I guess it is. And mm -hmm. I don't think there's any sand roads anymore. We had one when I was a kid and we just go lope down the sand road. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Um, I doubt there's any of those anymore. I feel like we shouldn't be on the internet telling people to go lope down the road. <laughs> yeah, not on Don't the road, not very, physically on the road anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but if you can find the headlands of a field, 
you know, and go put a couple miles yeah. on him. Let that horse relax at those. And when he takes it, even if they're not in the best position, you know, maybe they got their chin out a little bit. Maybe they are just a little stiff in the rib cage or something. If they're on the right lead, I'm just gonna sit myself up straight and just keep loping. Mm -hmm. Let them figure it out. They gave me what I wanted, right lead, that's what I want. Mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. Don't pick on them for every other thing. And that's when we see a lot when people come in here is, you know, as soon as they get it, they quit. And then, they, you know, they do it again or they, they, they don't let that horse know they, they got mission accomplished. They yeah. don't just say, thank you, that's what I wanted. Yeah. I do a lot where I'll, as soon as I get that lead, I'll lope them to the far end of an arena and, and get to the corner and just let the wall stop me. Mm -hmm. And uh, give them as much room as they can just to lope out nice and quiet. And, or if you want to reward them, like if you're having a hard time getting that right lead and you want to reward them, instead of getting them into it, you know you're on the right lead and then quitting, pet them while they're in the lope. Like don't, don't just get into the lope and then quit because then they're going to get frustrated about going out into it um, to begin with. I think we've gone on a bit of a tangent. I don't think that question was like getting into the lope. I think it was more like Oh, but that my fixes right... the rough and the unbalanced yeah. part because now they learn to be balanced up. Yeah. I yeah. never go on tangents. Yeah. Sometimes you do and sometimes I do. <laughs> but that fixed the like the unbalanced part. Yeah. They have to get balanced and there's only one way to get balanced is that's to practice it a lot. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll find too is once they lope better and they get more balanced in that lope and I can work through some s stiff spots that let's, let's say they're loping off and a little stiff on the side of the face, my turns will get better just because I've softened them up. They only get soft if they're going forward and loping's the easiest way to get them forward. So yeah, it, it'll sure help them a lot just loping straight in that right lead and just go for miles. Yeah. Okay, does anybody have any questions um, about the right lead or one side being dominant or um, turning to the right or feeling funny on one lead um, versus the other? You guys can ask those questions now. Um, but to kind of summarize, we talked about how, well, what we should have said first is make sure your horse isn't lame. You know, none of this really matters if your horse is sore, right? So figure out whether your horse is sore. And then probably the issue is, probably the issue is stemming from your horse because most horses are one side dominant and most horses are left side dominant. So if you're struggling to the right, usually that's where it starts. Um, we talked about the theories about why horses are typically left side dominant. Um, we talked about what that creates in the rider, how that creates, um, I don't want to say that the rider is compensating for the horse because it's more like the horse or the rider's um, reactive rather than kind of proactive um, most of the time. But we talked about kind of what happens to the rider when they're feeling unbalanced going to the right and a few equitation tips, I guess, for how to fix that. Um, we talked about how we, we talked about a lot about practice. Just keep them in the lope, keep them in there and keep them doing it. Um, so for um, Susan, who asked this question, Susan, try to stay in the right lead. Try to make sure that you are not getting pushed to the outside. See if you can make sure that you are balanced where you want to be. Don't help your horse, don't over help your horse. Just stay in the lope and keep working in the lope. Um, if you can make those little tweaks to your body position and kind of get out of your horse's way a little bit, then probably within a few rides, you'll see that your horse is a little bit more balanced. As they get more fit, like in Ontario right now, we're sitting, getting towards the end of April. Some people are starting to ride if they haven't been riding all winter. Um, so if your horse has been off a fair bit, it's going to, the right lead should get better as the horse gets more fit. Um, and what else did we talk about? We talked about, um, yeah, just keep them loping. Ride outside, ride, ride straight. Try not to mess with them too much in that right lead right off the bat. Just let them get loping. 
Let them get stretched out. I think one thing too that we, or I forgot, when I'm working on a one-sided horse, I usually will go right at that side, right off the bat, right off the bat. I like to start loping them right off the bat on that side. If they're one-sided, I go right to that right side. And then I'll work a little bit to the left. On an aged horse or a young horse, or what do you mean? Either one. And then the last lope departures I want to use for the day mm -hmm. are to the right. Mm -hmm. And an old boy told me one time that the last thing you teach that horse on your ride, he will sit in his stall for 23 hours and think about it. <laughs> So okay. if I can lope him off really well, and I do it till he has a couple good ones, mm -hmm. instead of loping off his good way, the last one, so that you feel like you've accomplished something, yeah. lope him off his way mm -hmm. or his bad way and make that the last thing he does. And everybody kind of laughs sometimes at me because I'll do something, a maneuver or whatever. And I usually don't walk too many of my horses out on their back. When they give me one maneuver that I've been working at and they try, they don't have to be perfect, but they try. They, they mentally tried for me. When I do get done and I say, whoa, I usually get off, loosen the cinch and walk them out mm -hmm. on the ground. But Loosen the cinch, take off the boots, scratch them on the face. Let like, them know they've yeah. done good. Let them mm -hmm. reward them that way. Um, yeah. I think that works better than petting them. I don't think horses truly understand what, petting them when they're on their back means mm -hmm. um a lot of people get a little overjoyed when they go to pet them and maybe pet them a little aggressively um i am all for petting them when you're on their back but i think getting off of them does a, a bigger reward right off the bat and they understand that and that old belief um like i say they sit there for 23 hours thinking boy if i lope to the right and I do a couple good ones. That's boy, when he's I get the treat release like of pressure. God. Yeah, they're yeah. going to be really good. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's so important. To what What's the last thing in their brain before you put them away for the day? Yeah. And maybe the people's. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that a lot of people will go their good way to finish off so that they feel good about it. And that doesn't work. Pesky. Horses don't think the same way. No, it's not about how good we feel. It's about making them feel like the right thing is familiar and comfortable. And, hmm. and it doesn't come have to back be perfect. It, again. it has to be that they gave me some try. They, they, yeah. Even if they fumble through it a little bit, sometimes I'll, I'm cool with that. If they, if I feel them, the wheels are turning in that brain. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm after. Is did they try? Did they mentally try to give me those feet? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I don't see any questions in here. Seems like maybe we covered it. Um, or people are just tired of listening to us. Or, yeah, people are tired of listening to us. That could be it, too. Well, thank you for jumping on um, live with us. And if you're in Ontario with us and we're in lockdown... And it's snowing. 3.0. And it's cold. It's snowing. <laughs> First day back to virtual school. Um, it's all good. Massive internet outage yesterday. Like, <laughs> yeah, we hope you guys are taking care. And uh, I, I don't know. We're happy to do this for you. We're happy to provide a change of scenery. I don't know. Um, hopefully help you with your horses a little bit. So... Thank you for jumping on. And if you have questions, then send them on in and we'll try to get to them. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good night.